This is Bishop Michael Burbage, and you are listening to the Walk Humbly Podcast. Welcome to the Walk Humbly Podcast from the St. Clair Studio in the Diocese of Arlington. We are back. I am Tom Shakely, Chief Communications Officer for the Diocese of Arlington, and I am joined by our host, Bishop Michael Burbage. Welcome. Thank you, Tom. It's great to be here. I just uh, I was coming across the uh, campus uh, today. I saw all of our students coming back to school. Whoa. So uh, I'm, I'm so happy. It's always a, a wonderful sight. I know we're going to talk a little bit about back to school uh, later in this podcast. It's hard to believe it's already here, but it, that's right. It is. We are back. But before we get into back to school season, we've got, uh, we've got some exciting news. You know, after many months of, uh, of collaborative work, uh, across the diocese, in, in many ways, the Catholic Diocese of Arlington has a beautiful new website at arlingtondiocese.org. Uh, we'll link to the show. Uh, we'll link to the site in the show notes. And if you haven't visited, you'll discover many new features as well as a, an overall emphasis on on witness, especially through photos and video. It's beautiful, right? It is really a, a wonderful uh, website. I'm hearing so many uh, positive comments uh, when I'm out. Uh, from the office, visiting the parishes, and so many people are very complimentary. And you know, the word uh, that you hear, words that you hear right away are uh, attractive, user friendly, practical, uh, exciting. Uh, so I really do want to, as you mentioned, Tom, this is a lot of hard work for a long period of time uh, with our communications team and so many other offices. Uh, and yeah, I just really would like to thank everyone uh, because this is a, uh, we we uh, renewed our website shortly after I arrived here, but it's just a reminder that communications, you got to keep, you got to keep your eye Things on that change ball. Fast, it right? changes fast. And there's always new tools and new ways of communicating the good news. And uh, with this website, I think we are availing ourselves of a very valuable resource uh, and very practical. Uh, you know, I, 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 think the Wayfinder and the homepage is a good improvement because right away uh, you see links to some of the most frequently sought information like the parish and mass confession yes. finder. <laughs> Probably the most in demand. <laughs> People go right to that and it's so easy to find in marriage prep, youth ministry, vocations, faith formation, uh, school finder. We have a simpler events page for our diocesan wide events, our news and our announcements and our presence on platforms like Instagram and X have, all of this uh, brings us to greater visibility. And uh, the news site also has built a, a translation tool. I think this is amazing. It's a fun thing. Yeah, uh, allowing the site to be instantly translated to Vietnamese, Spanish, Korean. That is incredible. Don't ask me how that's done, but <laughs> it's incredible that it can be done. The wonders of yeah, of Google and big tech. Yeah, it's not perfect, of course, but it's a pretty darn good auto translation feature. And uh, yeah, any any who've been involved with a website launch or even a refresh know you know it's it's a daunting project. It's a bit like uh, a bit like a home renovation in a sense, or at least a serious yeah. spring cleaning. You know, you've got uh, in our case thousands of pages, and so much of this is really evergreen content, stuff that that needs to be out there, that's that's witnessing, that's right. serving the faithful, that's serving those curious about the faith. And so we really hope that uh, that this refreshed website at Arlington Diocese. Uh, can be a way not just to learn more about the diocese, um, but for all really to draw closer to the sacramental life of our community. Um, speaking of which, of course, we've got the Golden Jubilee Celebration live stream event on Thursday, September 5th. All the faithful are encouraged to participate virtually in a special Golden Jubilee live stream event featured on our website under events. Uh, and this will feature a premiere of many good things. Um, Bishop, do you want to walk us through what this is? Sure. Features? And as, as we know, we've used uh, this Jubilee celebration uh, for a three-year preparation, uh, renewing our uh, focus on the Holy Eucharist, uh, the protection of our Blessed Mother, uh, focusing on the new evangelization. So it's been a very spiritual uh, journey. And, but now we're at the point uh, to celebrate, uh, to celebrate our 50th anniversary. And during the Mass, uh, the, we will have the rite of, of the dedication of the new altar in our cathedral, which is so beautiful. People are going to be so touched uh, when they see that. The Jubilee Fest that we had uh, in, in June uh, at the campgrounds there, we invited the entire diocese. And yes. I was so thrilled. So many people came. It's for like 7,000 people, 7,000, right? like for the mass and the events. Now, I wish I could invite 7,000 to the cathedral, <laughs> cathedral, but we only hold uh, like 1,100. So every parish uh, will be represented. Uh, 
pastors have received uh, at least four tickets where they could have their parish represented uh, at at, at the mass on September 5th at two o'clock, along with our multicultural communities and all the various organizations, our high schools, our cathedral school. So the diocese will be reflected. Not everyone can be there in person, but like you said, Tom, they can be at the mass uh, participating uh, and, in, and celebrating with us via live stream uh, uh, on that day. Uh, and Or if they're unable to do that, uh, certainly in prayer on September 5th. We need to be united on that day. But you mentioned a schedule. I'm really uh, pleased with this schedule, too, that at 1230 prior to the uh, live streaming of the Mass, there'll be a historical documentary, about 30 minutes commemorating the 50 years as a diocese. And again, uh, this uh, doc- documentary was done in-house with our yes. wonderful communications team, and uh, it is absolutely wonderful. It's a documentary. It's 30 minutes, uh, but it goes by so quickly. It's, uh, it is beautiful footage, uh, such a, uh, a great overview of our diocese. I think people are going to be fascinated by it, um, and I, I think it's appropriate for our, our, some of our teachers and religious educators from middle school and above uh, just to learn about this diocese that we are blessed to belong to. And then at 1.15, uh, there'll be an exclusive video tour of the renovated cathedral, which I'm so excited to share uh, with our uh, listeners and parishioners because the cathedral is the mother church. Every parishioner is a parishioner of St. Thomas More Cathedral because yes, it's the mother amen. church. Uh, so it's your cathedral. Uh, and uh, you will be fascinated, uh, my friends, as Father Hudgens, uh, the pastor of St. Teresa, uh, walks us through the tour and explains some of the significant features. Uh, and then, as you said, Tom, the Mass at 2 o'clock, I'm so pleased that uh, the Apostolic Nuncio, who represents our Holy Father, will be with us, a couple of the cardinals, and about 30 other bishops from around the country. And that I say that because it's a reminder that this is not just a celebration for the Diocese of Arlington. It's a celebration for the church in the United States. This is a significant moment, and having bishops from around the country is a reflection that the the church in the United States is rejoicing uh, with us. So it will be wonderful to welcome so many people, and so excited about uh, the Mass on September the 5th. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Bishop. And again, yeah, you can go to arlingtondiocese.org slash events to find the information for the Golden Jubilee celebration live stream event. And as you mentioned, that uh, that historical documentary and that video tour by Father Hudgens are exclusive to this live stream. Um, we'll make those videos available later and on different platforms, but they're going to be premiering there and exclusive there. So you mentioned, Bishop, back to school season. It is back to school season. We've got another month of summer ahead of us still uh, on the calendar, but it's nevertheless time to head back to school. And today, in fact, as we're speaking, uh, more than 18,000 students are heading back to school across the diocese uh, in preschools, elementary schools, high schools. It's a it's a beautiful time of year. It is. Our Catholic schools have seen, as you just mentioned, the numbers such a uh, increase uh, in enrollment. And uh, I had the opportunity already to uh, celebrate mass for all of our Catholic edu- our educators in our Catholic schools. And uh, as I often say, as bishop of this diocese, I am so proud of our Catholic schools. I have great confidence uh, in the excellence in education that our students receive um, and also in our strong Catholic identity. Uh, I have utmost assurance that our schools are very Catholic, uh, teach the truth of the gospel, uh, the virtues and the values uh, of our Lord, uh, and our students are receiving that in such a compassionate uh, way and given opportunities to live their faith, practice their faith, learn their faith, and live their faith uh, through various service projects and retreats throughout the year. Uh, so a word of uh, thanks and, and, and prayers uh, for our, Catholic, our educators in our Catholic schools, as well as our religious education formation programs. I met uh, with them as well, and I, I know uh, the same is true. Our parishes, uh, for those not attending a Catholic school, provide uh, excellence in formation, faith formation. But in both our, our Catholic schools and our faith formation programs, we know uh, that we are only partners uh, with our parents. Yeah. Uh, we have always believed and taught, and the church makes this very clear, uh, from the moment that parents have their child baptized, uh, that you, dear parents, are the first teachers of your children in the faith. You are the first teachers. And we are only there to assist you and to support you. Uh, and then 
as the students go to school, go to religious education, they come back home. And there, uh, there must be that consistency in, in teaching and learning and living uh, the faith. So thank you, parents, for the trust you have in our teachers and our educators and faith formation directors and catechists. It is truly a privilege to help you. But renew your promise, dear parents, to be the first teachers and the best of teachers of your children in the faith that we are so uh, proudly professing. It's such a challenge. It's such a challenge. I know as a, as a father of a young child myself to think that and the gravity of it, uh, but to know that, that the church, the whole church is here with us as parents uh, and as a family is such a, such a blessing, such an encouragement. And I always mention too, Tom, that a, a beginning of a new school year is a wonderful opportunity for our students, especially to realize that's what the Lord does for us. He gives us a, a new year, a new academic year is a new opportunity. Uh, we are not the same person we were this time last year. God allows us to grow. God allows us to learn from our mistakes. So put behind uh, what was last year, learn from anything, the lessons God taught you, but move forward. This is a new year, a new opportunity, a new blessing. And I've encouraged our students as well as our parents uh, to be very mindful that we educate and form the, the whole person. Uh, so we are very interested in the academic progress of our students. Uh, but we are also very interested and concerned these days about their emotional health, mental health, and well-being. And so while we don't have to lower our standards, I think it is very, very important uh, to make sure that we remind our students that all the Lord asks is their very best. And he blesses their efforts. And life is to be enjoyed, especially at this time of, uh, in their lives. They're to have a balanced life. And we cannot be unreasonable in what we ask of our students. Uh, and, and sometimes I worry about that, that as we, our high school students are being, you know, look in their eyes at college, well, you have to do this. You have to take all these classes and work, uh, you know, from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. And then we wonder why sometimes our students are stressed and anxious. So we, as the educators, as the parents, I think have to be, yes, keeping the bar high, raise, keeping uh, excellence in education, but also be mindful of the whole person. I want our young people to enjoy this time in their lives and to look back on it with fine memories, not as a stressed and troubled time in their lives. Amen. Amen. And one of the ways that that uh, might bear out is through something that I know has been in the news recently because uh, Governor Yunkin uh, here in Virginia recently issued an executive order on cell phone free schools. Uh, so this has been uh, you know, uh, in, in conversation in the public and the upshot is basically that all Virginia schools uh, are, are to be cell phone free throughout the day. I think that's great. Uh, Arlington Catholic schools have already been strong in this area. So it's not new to us necessarily, but what will now get even stronger. Can you walk us through that briefly? Yeah, and again, we've been ahead of that game. Uh, we've understood that um, for really ever since uh, uh, you know, COVID right, and reminded of us that also of, you know, how we can, in a time when we're not with community, we can just find all of our security in uh, social media, in the cell phone, texting, all those kind of things. But we learned clearly that we're, we're meant for communion. And we can live without a cell phone for a school day. <laughs> is it true? <laughs> it is true. Uh, our students learn that uh, as well when they go on retreats. You know, they hand over their cell phone and they think, oh my goodness, how am I going to survive 48 hours without my phone? <laughs> they come out of it saying, I, felt, I never felt so free. I never felt so free. And I think, you know, you know, one of the things that we were seeing is that, you know, in between classes, uh, students are you know, walking the hallways with their heads down, texting one another. And we're like, wait a second, this is a time for engagement, uh, to engage one another, to accompany one another. And now we see without the phones during a school day, that's what's happening. They're engaging, they're noticing one another, they're enjoying one another, Building and they're free, they're free from the stress. Hey, we have it covered, God forbid there's an emergency or something, that we can get hold of our students. Uh, so this is, uh, um, and I really do thank the governor because I think this is good for children. I think this is good for young people. And I'm really glad that he, he has recognized what we know to be true, uh, even through our experience. Yes, 100%. I know that was certainly my experience 
in high school. Uh, you know, the iPhones and things weren't out at that point, but th- there were phones, uh, and uh, and and they were away, mm-hmm. and it was you know so defining of the experience to actually get to meet people, to make relationships, to make friendships, and so it's a good thing. Uh, so, Bishop, I know this isn't the only highlight, the only change that's impacting students this year. There are other other good highlights that we should talk about with Arlington Catholic Schools. Yeah, you hinted at, at that a little bit earlier. Uh, there's been an increase in enrollment in our, our Catholic schools at 50 percent of our diocesan schools, including a 4 percent increase at our diocesan high schools. So growth is good. People recognize that in our Catholic schools, uh, there will be uh, excellence in education but in an environment uh, where truth is celebrated, where virtues are honored and values safeguarded. Uh, I'm also very, very proud uh, that all of our high schools and uh, 19 of our other schools uh, have programs for students with intellectual developmental Mm -hmm. disabilities. And, And that number may go up. That's part of our strategic plan. I want to be able to say all of our schools yes. uh, are able to do that. But, you know, there are challenges to get to that point. But we're, we're going to embrace those challenges. Um, and when we say uh, that the, we have schools and programs students with intellectual development dis- disabilities, that is the students are fully immersed in the school. Uh, in the daily activity, the daily life of the school. They're, they're part of the uh, everything that occurs in that school as, as a member of the student body, which is so, so wonderful to see. I'm throwing our, 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 I often talk about how proud I am of the Catholic identity in our Catholic schools. And, you know, one of the ways that is reflected is, is the chapels. I look at our four Catholic high schools, uh, the the beautiful chapels, uh, St. John Paul uh, the Great. As soon as you pull up, it's at the center of the school, where it should be, uh, because it's the center of our lives, the Lord and the Eucharist. And to watch kids moving quickly uh, from one class to another, but stopping to acknowledge the Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. Our recently uh, new school, uh, St. Paul uh, the Sixth, uh, very clear uh, from wherever you see the school, what is our priority? There is the chapel, the light of Christ shining. Uh, Bishop O'Connell has just done a, a recently a beautiful renovation to their chapel, and Ireton, Bishop Ireton, is in the process of that. So we want to say you, you, we've also done uh, academic resources, athletic facilities, all those kind of things. All those things are important, but what is at the heart of what we do also deserves that kind of attention. I'm proud that our schools are doing so. And I, I do want to say, Tom, uh, you know, we cannot have Catholic education. We cannot have religious faith formation uh, without our devoted uh, educators and catechists and teachers. So a word of, of thanks to all of them. Amen. Well, Bishop, you got me excited. I kind of wish I could go back. To <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but wonderful, too, especially if you're listening and, and you think you might have a, a vocation as a Catholic educator. I, I don't think there's any better place than the Diocese of Arlington. So uh, an encouraging development uh, as we shift away from from the topic of schools uh, was from the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, Did you see this, Bishop, that that there was this faith night hosted uh, just last week, uh, I think August 13th? I did not, but I can't believe you're making me talk about the Baltimore Orioles. (laughs) Well, they played the Nationals, you know? Okay. (laughs) What is that, Tom? What is that? uh, Well, well, the Faith Night. So the Faith Night featured uh, a number of uh, of players, including the pitcher Trevor Rogers, uh, and they they basically just publicly shared testimonies of faith. Uh, So the the Orioles were playing the Nationals, and so it was kind of a kind of a hometown game, and uh, so it was a a special witness, I think, uh, for all of us here about the importance of faith. Reliance on God and and in all that we do, really. Um, and it was interesting to see that they kind of took this from another team that did a similar faith night, uh, I think, in Minnesota a year or two ago. So that's a kind of an encouraging thing. It'd be it nice really to is. Off. It really is. I'm really happy to hear that. And uh, because, you know, uh, our, our young people look up to athletes. Um, and when they can witness to their faith and talk about that priority in their lives, who knows how God's using that to touch the, someone, a young person's heart. So good for them. Good for them doing that. That's excellent. Well, Bishop, we are already at the time for questions from the faithful. Today we have a, a very good question. Uh, and, and before I mention it as a reminder for anyone listening who has a question, uh, Bishop Burbridge uh, is excited to answer them. We get so many good questions and, uh, and we do our best to answer them in a timely fashion. You can reach out to us uh, via, via email, communications at arlingtondiocese.org, or direct message on any of our diocesan social media channels. So our question for today, 
I am a 75 year old woman. I don't have a car and it's a long walk to and from the bus stop. I hear daily mass and Sunday mass on TV. Is that all right? Am I receiving grace through TV mass? Uh, am I committing a sin? Uh, it's a very good question, and it certainly reflects the uh, the holiness uh, of the person asking the question of wanting to do what God is asking. Uh, yeah, well, we have to remember uh, that while, yes, we are obliged to attend Sunday Mass, uh, full active participation, if sickness or ill health or extraordinary circumstances uh, prevent us from, from doing so, of course, we are not committing any sin uh, if we miss that mass. Uh, and it may include uh, someone who is older, may just have mobility issues uh, or just transportation. Uh, so in this situation, we want to do whatever we can to help people to get to mass. Uh, even riding with a friend or neighbor, we, yes. maybe we could be mindful of that. Uh, but if it's physically impossible, then we should not be worrying of offending God or, or committing a sin. Uh, but a good question, I think maybe we, we could ask as parishioners, fellow parishioners, whatever, uh, can I perhaps find someone uh, that I could bring to Mass who maybe is dealing mm. uh, with this issue? I know a number of our parishes uh, do that. They provide uh, some uh, transportation. People go uh, and, and will pick up people at their homes and bring them to Mass. And that's a ministry I think uh, I would like to uh, many of our parishes uh, to consider. It's also a good opportunity um, uh, many of us got comfortable uh, in mm-hmm. uh, in COVID yes. uh, to the convenience of you know staying at home and and watching mass and at that time that was the closest that we could do uh, to participating. But now that we um, are uh, you know in our churches and celebrating the mass, it it is asked of us uh, to to keep holy that Sabbath day, to be at church. Uh, and to actively and fully participate. And the only way you can actively and fully participate is to, of course, you know, hear the word of God being proclaimed, but also to receive the Holy Eucharist, to receive Jesus uh, himself, his precious body and blood. And so nothing can replace that. Uh, and if we're able to do that, that is certainly what the Lord asks of us. Uh, and he does so because he wants to give us what we need the most, uh, the bread of life uh, to sustain us and to nourish us uh, and to help us uh, as we go forward to another week. Um, and any time we can spend in prayer, of course, uh, uh, as we prepare to do so is also a great way um, you know, to uh, put ourselves in the position of, of being with the Lord and receiving the graces he offers to us. Thank you so much, Bishop. Sure. Well, I know we're going to speak again just after Labor Day, and we'll look forward to it. Okay. Will we be, before? is, is that before the uh, September 5th? It or, is. It's or, September 4th. Oh, wow. The hours before. I will be uh, very wound up, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look forward to it. All right. I'm looking forward to it also. And uh, thank you, dear listeners, uh, for uh, uh, allowing us to have this moment with you. Uh, and I think when whether we're in school or have children in school, it doesn't matter. This time of year is a reminder that we're kind of back to a the routine, the normal routine. And as we do so, I just ask God's blessings upon all of you, uh, that he will sustain and guide you, uh, fill you with his grace and mercy and deepen you in your faith and trust in him as together we walk humbly with our God. Thank you for listening to the Walk Humbly podcast. Make sure you check out more episodes and all the podcasts our diocese offers on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and our diocesan website, arlingtondiocese.org. You can also follow me on X, formerly Twitter, at Bishop Burbage, where I provide a short gospel reflection each morning and on Instagram at Bishop Michael Burbage. Stay up to date with news, event information, and inspirational content by subscribing to our e-newsletter at arlingtondiocese.org.